a sudden downpour, bringing rain, hail, and flooding. She's in the car that girl needs to get out of her car. News 5 continuing coverage as we track the storm moving through southern Colorado as News 5 at 5 starts now. Bye-bye, Daddy's car. A monster storm. Here's a look at Mother Nature's wrath today as heavy rain and hail pounded southern Colorado. We've seen a ton of incredible pictures from our News 5 viewers. This is from Ryan in the Mountain Shadows area. You can see several cars floating down this residential street. And tonight we've confirmed this is all from a retaining pond giving way. And there's more. Take a look at this. The severe flooding continued across the area. Matt shared this video with us of the floodwaters near Camp Creek in Colorado Springs. Nearly two inches of rain falling. Look at all that debris in that short period of time. Water quickly making its way down the creek. Now, most of it has since receded, but there is still more rain in the forecast. We have team coverage of today's blast of heavy rain and hail. Our crews all across the El Paso County area tracking the trouble spots. But let's start with meteorologist Carly Hoffman as round two is moving through El Paso County at this hour. Carly, what are you tracking? Well, that's right. We have a lot going on right now, and we can expect even more rain later. Manitou Springs got hit pretty hard earlier today. Right now, just some light rain, so that's a nice change for them. But again, we're going to continue to monitor these showers and thunderstorms as we head right on into the afternoon. So popping up on our radar right now, we do have showers and thunderstorms in the Colorado Springs area. Again, Manitou Springs, just this lighter green color. Heavier rainfall is a little bit out towards the east. Now, this is going to be around Constitution Avenue. This is going to continue to track off to the east over the next couple of minutes and we are watching it progress as we head throughout the day today. We're watching these storms become a little bit stronger areas that you see in the pink and darker red possibility for some small hail and also going to be that heavier rainfall that we've seen throughout the day today. Another area seeing heavy rainfall right now Pueblo getting pelted with rain in a lot of areas. Again, this is shifting off to the south and east. These storms are slow moving. We have slow winds a lot that are steering these storms and that's allowing quite a bit of rainfall to fall over the uh, course of the next couple of hours. Now, we're not the only ones seeing rain out in the southeastern plains getting pelted with rain and small hail as well. Again, we have the potential for these showers and thunderstorms to keep developing right on in to the afternoon and evening. We do have plenty of moisture. Uniform dew points right now in the 50s and 60s, so the moisture content is there and the atmosphere set up to support thunderstorms. So good news with that. We're not expecting too much severe weather. However, the potential for flash flooding is there. We have this upslope flow and with that moisture being pushed in, this green color here means we're not done with the thunderstorms yet. Main threats with these again, gustier winds, small hail, but flash flooding is going to be an issue as we head overnight tonight. Now, no active warnings right now. Of course, we'll keep an eye on that for you. Look at that rain right on in through the evening, even into tomorrow morning. That's when we're going to get another round of showers and thunderstorms as we head into tomorrow. I'll be timing that out coming up first back to you. Bye bye, daddy's car. This is another look at one of the worst hit spots today. The Mountain Shadows neighborhood in Colorado Springs dealt with the heavy flooding all day. The flooding was so extreme because of a retaining pond giving way. And that's where we find News 5's Matt Pritchard tonight. He's been on the Mountain Shadows neighborhood all day long. How are things looking at this hour, Matt? Well, Annie, obviously a much different scene than what we saw earlier this afternoon. You can see the street now cleaned up from crews, but still a lot of dirt laying around and people still trying to clean up their sidewalks. You can see up the street there. Residents describe this as a flowing river that was coming up their lawns and toward their houses, drifting cars down the street and boxing them in with debris from that retention pond break. But the city says this could have been a lot worse if not for preemptive measures made over a week ago. We had just dug out the autism pond a week ago, so the large stones and things like that were trapped up there. The water did come through. It did overtop. The small branches did overtop, come through, and did get into the autism center. Now, Metro says they'll be back out here assessing the damage later into the week and making the necessary repairs to hopefully ensure this doesn't happen again. But neighbors fear this may be just a sign of things to come. We'll speak with them coming up tonight on News 5 at 6. In Colorado Springs, Matt Pritchard, News 5 Investigates. Matt, thank you. And now to that video from the Alpine Autism Center in Mountain Shadows. A lot of flooding and debris from a clogged catch basin. It forced the center to evacuate and we're told city crews had just been there earlier this week to clear it, so it could have been much worse. Flooding has happened at this center before and they built a retaining wall because of that reason, but the waters spilled over it. 
Let's take a look now at the wrath on the west side of Colorado Springs. This was the first casualty of that massive storm system. This is near Guard of the Gods and Centennial. Our crews on scene found hail all across the road, making it very difficult for cars to move, as you see there. Heavy equipment had to be brought in. News 5, we were on scene as that drama unfolded along the Garden of the Gods corridor this afternoon. One driver told us, insane. That was a quote, the amount of rain and hail that fell. We continue our coverage with Kelsey Kennedy and chaotic, to say the least here for drivers, Kelsey. Yeah, it was absolutely hectic out here for anyone trying to get around on the west side of Colorado Springs. Inches, maybe even a foot of hail falling in a matter of minutes, making it so treacherous for drivers. I want to give you a look at that. <laughs> Even four wheel drive trucks couldn't handle this amount of car of hail cars spinning out all over the road here at Garden of the Gods and 30th. This stranded driver couldn't do anything but watch as water flooded his engine and stalled out his car. Just car just broke down nowhere. I was a uh, the water is literally right next to my car. So if I open the door, I could water would almost come in. So I guess that happens when you have a little car in the uh, in Colorado, I guess. So I guess I learned my lesson. So. The city had to send in front end loaders to clean up all that hail. It took them over an hour to scoop it up and get it, get it off of the road. This is the aftermath. Still a good bit of mud and debris on the road, but unlike just a few hours ago, the road is now passable and definitely not dangerous anymore. Live in Colorado Springs, Kelsey Kennedy, News 5. Kelsey, thank you. And there's more. Take a look at this video along Mount Vernon Street near Union and Palmer Park in the Springs. It got hammered with heavy rain. It was so bad it clogged the storm drain, backed up the water that became so deep. One man drove into the intersection of Tweed at Mount Vernon, ended up standing on the top of his vehicle to get rescued. He just thought he could make it, I guess. We were yelling at him to stop, and he just kept going until he started floating off. So, Hale also contributed to the drainage problems, creating a mess for folks trying to get through that intersection, as you see there. People who live here say they've seen this before, with the heavy rain and hail flooding their basements. And it does not end there. Now to Manatee Springs, we heard from lots of you who witnessed heavy floods rip across the city streets. The floods were so severe, Canyon Avenue had to be shut down for several hours. Now we want to get you live to our crews on the streets, and Jesse Mitchell joins us now. Jesse, what are you tracking at this hour? Annie, we are still seeing a lot of damage here. The storm moved through very quickly, but it left behind a mark. You can see behind me this fence totally knocked over and the water still moving very fast all along Manitou. The amazing thing to see was the community coming together to help with the cleanup efforts. Volunteers from around Manitou gathered outside Creekside Cuisine, one of the most hard hit businesses in the area. They were scooping and scraping just to try to get all that mud back into the river. Everyone says the project was a tr true demonstration of the Manitou mentality. It's simply amazing. Um, just everyone is, is gathering together to help out and, and do what they can and fix what they can. Many businesses opened back up as soon as the storm was over. Creekside will most likely reopen tomorrow. And Manitou was filled with people enjoying the afternoon sunshine. And they're still out here now. It's still pretty busy downtown. Crews were out here assessing the damage, and they're still out here now just trying to clean up everything. If you're making your way down here, be careful on the streets and the sidewalks, as some of them can be a little bit slippery from that mud. For now, live in Manitou Springs, Jesse Mitchell, News 5. Jesse, thanks for the update. We weren't the only ones keeping an eye on the burn scar today. Senator Cory Gardner just happened to be in town today for a tour of the Waldo Canyon burn scar more than three years after the wildfire. He says it's clear a lot of work has been done, but he says they have a long way to go to get back to normal. But the same is true, he said, in Washington, where he's fighting some old policies with an East Coast bias. Gardner says disasters in the West, they're just different. In the West, it's not just a fire that you got with the fire, it's a flood that you will get because of the fire. And we have to have policies that recognize that and policies when it comes to funding that provide us the flexibility in our resources to address the needs of both the fire and the floods that will come as a result. Gardner says another issue with both fire and flood disasters, money. Right now, the Forest Service spends half of its budget on fighting wildfires, meaning important mitigation projects often lose out. Much more on that coming up on News 5 at 6.
And as Carly showed you on First Alert 5 Doppler, Pueblo County also getting some heavy rain this afternoon. Jason shared this video, what was falling on Pueblo's south side this afternoon. Remember, you can always keep track of the changing weather conditions by driving that Doppler at KOAA.com. We have interactive maps posted for you right now under the Weather tab. And right now, also a great time to download the First Alert 5 app to your smartphone for those push alerts. Very important. Stick with News 5 throughout the show, along with News 5 at 6 and 10 for our continuing and comprehensive coverage.